Hello, everybody, and I'm delighted uh, to be joining you from uh, England today. I'm so sorry I can't be with you in person, uh, but we are here today to discuss one of the critical questions for women's businesses at this time. The world is at an inflection point. Businesses across the world have been devastated by the social and economic consequences of the pandemic. Many thousands of small and medium-sized businesses have closed worldwide and across sub-Saharan Africa, the latest prediction for the peak of the virus is still some months away. COVID-19 is radically changing the way we live and work and pushing us further into a digital world. To survive, businesses must quickly consider how do they move into the digital economy. In low and middle income countries, mobile technology is proving to be a lifeline. It's helping businesses to adapt the way they work, trade, interact with customers, bank, and market their products. But not everyone is ready or able to embrace the new digital reality. Before COVID-19, women's businesses were already disadvantaged. They were more often denied the finance, skills, networks, and mentors to enable success. Women were already dealing with competing priorities by carrying a grossly unequal share of the unpaid domestic labor. Women were least likely to have access to technology and knowledge. And now we're also pushing the burden of economic recovery on women, asking them to take on more unpaid care work and homeschooling. We simply are not going to succeed as businesses or economies if we ignore the full potential of half the world's population. The Sri Blair Foundation for Women supports women entrepreneurs in over 100 low and middle income countries to start, grow and sustain their successful businesses. In April, we asked the women we work with how the crisis was affecting them. Nearly all, 97%, said they were being negatively impacted, and over three quarters said they urgently wanted more help to adapt to the new realities. With business resilience strategies, digital marketing, e-commerce, and diversification. But where there's disruption, there's also opportunity for positive change. Digital tech can not only help build more resilient businesses, but can also help to create a more equal future. The foundation recognized early the potential to accelerate progress towards women's economic equality using technology. Mobile and the internet can help democratize access to skills and training. Mobile banking is helping access to finance. But there's still a long way to go. We have to work together to make sure that women are able to access, shape, and control technology. Technology-enabled services are at the heart of the foundation's delivery model. We use digital skills training apps, online mentoring, blended and online training to deliver impactful support at scale. Our tools help women access the business skills training, financial knowledge, confidence, markets and networks they need. So far, we've reached 160,000 women over 100 countries. And at Davos in January, we launched our campaign to reach 100,000 more women by the end of 2022. At this hugely challenging time, we are working with our partners to ensure that women get the support they need. The Sri Blair Foundation for Women's Her Venture mobile learning app has been developed specifically for women who own small and medium enterprises in low and middle income countries. The app is currently being used in Vietnam, Indonesia, Nigeria, and now, thanks to the wonderful support from DHL Express, it's coming to Kenya. Kenya was selected as the next country to benefit from the availability of her venture following a needs assessment conducted in 2019. After the scale of the pandemic became clear, and after further market research, we've been able to make adaptions to account for the challenges emerging as a result of the COVID-19, including fast-tracking the integration of new e-commerce learning track. With her venture and our other programs, we aim to reach 10,000 women entrepreneurs in Kenya and help transform their micro, small, and medium businesses into even more thriving and sustainable enterprises. Investing in women entrepreneurs plays a crucial role in supporting Kenya's 2030 vision 
of becoming a middle-income nation by 2030. 49% of micro and small businesses are women-owned, more than in any other East African country. Yet women only own 9% of medium-sized enterprises, suggesting they find it difficult to transition from small scale to medium scale. Indeed, the African Development Bank identifies that gender-based challenges restrict women's progress. A lack of adequate training programs and information, problems accessing finance and restrictive social cultural norms are limiting the success of women's business in Kenya. Women need tailored, flexible support to overcome these challenges. And the World Bank suggests mobile technology could help provide this support, offering easy access to services. Positive change is possible, but achieving it has to be an active, conscious decision. And change can't happen alone. It has to be collaborative and democratic. That's why today it's my pleasure to be joined by our friends and partners, DHL Express, whose funding and expertise not only helped us to launch her venture in Kenya, but has seen us integrate new features like the e-commerce learning track and the customization of the app to the Kenyan market. Today marks the wider rollout of her venture across Kenya, having already supported hundreds of women in Kenya through our pilot phrase. You'll hear more about the app and how we work in Kenya from Helen, the CEO of my foundation, later on. But for now, please download the app, available from the Google Play Store and coming soon to Apple, and help share this vital tool in efforts to establish not a new normal, but a fairer normal for women entrepreneurs in Kenya and around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would now like to invite uh, our cabinet secretary for the Ministry of Public Service and Gender, and who was also the past chair lady of the Public Service Commission uh, for Kenya. I sincerely appreciate your comments, uh, Sherry Blair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Sherry Blair the chairperson of the foundation, John Pearson, the CEO of DHL, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say I'm very happy to join you this morning, this time as we launch the Sharon uh, Brea Foundation for Women, who are together with the DHL as we launch her venture, her uh, business skills learning application for women in business. I note that we will be involving about 10 uh, million women. And uh, I'm extremely happy that uh, this venture, this intervention is uh, evidence-based, having been decided on the study that was done in Kenya. I am particularly happy to join you because this really contributes to what I do as a minister in charge of gender, where we are saying, Gender is not just women, we are talking about equal opportunities, politically, economically, financially, for both men and women. But since we know women have been a little bit more disadvantaged, we are happy to have intervention more for women than men. What I want to do uh, with the little time that I have, I just want to share experiences from the Kenyan government. Then I will also highlight how COVID-19 pandemic has affected women in business, and then also highlight what the government has done. And I think I'll be able to conclude by doing that. We find that uh, uh, on, on um, women uh, in, in the, we, we in the Ministry of Gender, we are always struggling in around four thematic area. One of the areas we try to look deeply and try to solve barriers that prevent uh, gender equality is women in leadership and decision making. And we find how do we build the capacity, including women in business, how do they feel their, their capacity to participate, to voice up, and also to learn so that they can be able to find the spaces that they can be able to push their voices. We also work around women in socioeconomic empowerment, and we strongly believe 
unless women are financially dependent, then they find it very difficult to find how they can uh, be heard or how can they can take forward their agenda. Therefore, this particular application that is going to digitize women's in a work in business, I think just contribute to the fear that we work around women in social economic uh, empowerment. We also work in uh, women in peace and security uh, because we know when there's no peace or security, uh, then women and the children are most destabilized. Therefore, we are always finding how can women participate or be included in the peace and building and security building. And uh, we also work around the fourth uh, thematic area that we work uh, evolves around gender-based violence because we have seen uh, when there's gender-based violence that also uh, affects the equal opportunities for, for, for women and also they affect their socioeconomic stability. Therefore, uh, we, I want to say today that um, empowering women economically really matters because we know women who are empowered, they are able to take care of their families and we just know also the strength of any nation is the strength of their families. Therefore, women who are able to take their children to school, women who are able to take their children to hospital when they are sick, or even provide a basic square meal, is very, it matters why we empower women. Of course, not to say that when we, we the only saying that when you educate women, you educate a, a community. And when you educate a man, you educate an individual. We also know that where women are empowered, communities prosper. Where women suffer, you also see communities suffer. Therefore, it matters, uh, Madam Sherry, for investing in women because you are strengthening the basic unit of any country. Uh, looking at uh, what, uh, when the women are empowered also, it liberates them. Uh, I'm sure any woman who is doing small business and is able to have some resources, she is kind of liberated and they, and they can be able to travel to one side of the, of the country to another, maybe to seek opportunities. It also makes them more alert to exploit opportunities that come in the country. And we are seeing those opportunities. We have seen some in, in correlation between the women who have had opportunities to go to school. They also are able to spot the business opportunities and not only spot, go further to exploit those opportunities. Therefore, we are very, I'm very happy that uh, we are empowering women through this uh, learning application so that they are able to champion about their own health and also their own women's rights. Then looking at what are some of the women who I have come across in Kenya struggling with. We find that uh, women in small businesses, and I'm talking about business hiring one person or two to maximum of almost uh, uh, 50 people. We find they are struggling with the um, funding for their business. They struggle again with the finances. They struggle again with the data and information. They struggle with business development services. How do I run my business? And in all this, if we have this application that we will be bringing it all together, I can see we are giving them a hand start. Those with the business will be able to move ahead. And those who are now starting their business, they'll be able to start with an application which is helping them to bring all what matters to be able to have a good business. Therefore, looking uh, at Kenya and the COVID-19 pandemic, we do realize that this is a crisis like you know any other. No government was prepared, no, no individual was prepared. And for that, we have seen businesses uh, which are run by women really being affected in, in the sense that the people have lost jobs because of this um, partial lockdown. And we have also seen the children are now home. That means also increasing the unpaid care work for women. With those struggles, we also have seen some level of increased stress. Therefore, mental health becomes a big challenge. Therefore, in my view, I was feeling that now that we are getting this kind of application, 
women are able even to work from home and they will be able to be able to uh, kind of highlight what is their merchandise and what the business they are in and they can even get those business opportunities right at their home uh, and and i think since women have always wanted to work from home uh, i am also seeing covid 19 not just being a big challenge it's also giving it a big opportunity uh, madam chair i found even with now opportunities brought by COVID, some of our women in Kenya have started having small uh, kind of cottage industry back at home, uh, tailoring things like like uh, masks. They have also been able to do some value additions of some food stuff so that it can last a little bit longer. So while we are looking at the challenges, I think we should also look at what opportunities underlie this crisis that women can exploit, and with the help of this application, then they should be able to survive and grow their businesses. We have also, as I come to, to conclude that uh, I'm like, we have also, government has realized and values women in the business. And uh, for that reason, we have in my ministry, where we have Women Enterprise Fund, that meaning giving a little money for women who have a, a, a proposal of what they want to go into business in, and they are funded. And we have found also women being very, very good in their own repayment. The government also has improved the ease of doing business so that when they come to registering their business, improving the environment for doing their business, I think that the governments have put that in place. We have also seen that uh, with the, now the COVID, government has come up with a stimulus, a stimulus uh, package where is giving those in business, uh, both men and women, some loan that is of a little or a lower interest. But at the same time, as they get these loans, they are also is it they are some engagement to find how is they are they going to be able to pay uh, these loans. So what I would like to say is that uh, with all the effort the government is doing, it is never enough. We always need partners partners who can be able to see what the government is doing, what remains undone, and how that plugs into women doing in business. Because as I said earlier, we, women who are in business also, uh, and there's a lot of standards do say that, they have some level of freedom. I mean, they are not, nobody can harass them. They are both of themselves. So I think much as it's tough doing business, it also gives another level of personal satisfaction that when supported with this application and in digitizing their business, just sitting back their home or wherever they are doing business anytime, anywhere, I think would go a long way to promote the growth. And we always notice that um, most of the businesses, they struggle to move to a small to medium. We hope with the help of this application, some of the business will be able to move from small to medium. And uh, as I conclude, government is going to support this effort and anytime we are needed we just uh, telephone away what we are able to do we will be able to join hands Shelley, so that we can take this agenda forward and next time you come to kenya we must visit some of the women who we are launching uh, this half venture today so that you can see what progress they were made hopefully a year time i thank you uh, Madam Minister, uh, I would like to sincerely thank you uh, for giving us um, at least the context in which uh, women entrepreneurs in Kenya are working in, uh, the challenges they are facing, and as much as letting us know what the government is doing about it and the significance really of this application coming into Kenya at this particular time. Thank you very much. It is now my privilege to invite uh, my boss. Um, John Peterson, who is also the CEO of DHL Globally, DHL Express Globally, who will give us insights into the role of DHL in uh, that um, the DHL is playing in supporting women entrepreneurs and how the Hub Venture app is part of our commitment um, to supporting communities in which we work. Over to you, John. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for hosting us. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, Andrew? Anyone?
all good. So um, yeah, I wish, I wish, I wish I was there with you today because uh, well, we were all there today because then we could all see each other and we could sort of tailor our words and um, the things we wanted to say to the heart of the program. So there is nothing formal about my words today, but they nevertheless come from the head, heart and guts of, um, of myself. And I know all the DHL people, um, Sharon, Henny, Vanessa, Megan, and all the others that have been working with us on this program. Um, it's easy for me because I visited the offices of Sherry Blair about a year ago and Sharon said, uh, well, if, if you're happy with it, John, um, maybe I can help you take it forward. And I'm glad you did, Sharon, because uh, with Henny and the team, um, you've got us to where we are today. And we thank uh, the foundation and um, you know, all of you for working with us so closely. These things aren't the work of moments. You know, you think you can put a program up in a, in a you know, flick of a sixpence or whatever you might want to say, but they take a lot of work. And then we were derailed obviously by um by covid but uh let me just say i you know congratulations on the work that you've done with women all over the world the 165,000 and the 100,000 to come that's an enormous number you know so over a quarter of a million women have been helped in their own personal ambitions which you know one of the words in dhl express is influence a thousand and by helping quarter of a million you can influence many thousands beyond that. Um, so it's a shame it's not physical, but we'll get there and we'll have the chance to meet. Um, we're absolutely proud to be a partner and take it to the next level. The very first meeting we had with John, I, I was surprised to hear that Deutsche Post actually had some partnership with the foundation, but on investigating that, it was quite hard to find out quite who donated whatever they donated, and it wasn't enough in my opinion. So we decided to take that to the next level and be, you know, firmly uh, sort of in bed and married and, and so to speak with um, all the good things you're doing. And I think, you know, if I think about DHL Express, one of the reasons why I was so, you know, I had that sort of instant level appeal was, you know, we are a truly global organization. And, you know, this isn't a pitch. This, this comes from you know, myself, who has worked for DHL Express for 35 years in just about every continent, certainly every business region, not every continent. But uh, And, um, you know, our global reach and the fact that we say to ourselves, and Ken Allen might have even used this line on you, Sherry in Davos, when he met you, you know, we are the most global company in the world and we have enormous assets and resources at our disposal. Um, we're present with our brand, with our people, typically with no agent um, sort of partnership, but with literally our own people in 220 countries. And, you know, so our, our ability to help people, um, individuals and companies and organizations is honestly limitless. Uh, I was just reminded of the fact that we actually moved physically a rugby ball uh, before the Rugby World Cup, which we've typically sponsored. Uh, we moved a rugby ball physically through 42 countries in uh, SSA, as it's called, or SSSA, the superstars of sub Saharan Africa. So no one knows the continent like we do, and no one is in a better position to embrace everything that this partnership stands for. Um, and, you know, I address now the, the 150 or so people on the, on the call. Um, you are in the best possible hands because I know Henny and I know Andrew and I know the team won't stop at anything in terms of making this partnership a success. Um, and, you know, if it is a success, and I know it will be, there's no limit to other parts of MENA, or Middle East and North Africa, or other parts of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, that we can take this partnership to. And you have my firm commitment on that. Um, it's also about, you know, um, the minister and Sherry Blair spoke about the, the core of the program and how helping, helping women in business and helping women in any personal situation carve out success for themselves in, a, in an industrial and a 
and a business way. But it also aligns nicely with DHL for her, which is part of our DHL for all. Uh, we partner with um, the Great Place to Work organization and one of their phrases, which I've adopted and DHL Express is full of one-liners and things that we say all the time, repetition, repetition, repetition. When you have to get through to 220 countries and when you have to get through to 100,000 people and know that, that they know the, the, the heart of our organization, we keep on saying the same things. And my, my philosophy is DHL is a great place to work for all, not for a few, not for many, but for all. And I absolutely believe in that ambition. So the, the For All banner is our umbrella, so to speak, and then DHL for her and all the, the programs that were, were running out for women in leadership align nicely with exactly what we're doing here with yourselves uh, and with the great people I'm talking to that are creating businesses. COVID, just briefly on that, I think it's another reason for our partnership in a way, although it um, our partnership preceded um, the, the start of COVID. You know, I heard, I think, the City Group CEO say, uh, "We're all in the different, we're all in the same storm, but in different boats." And no truer than than that is now. Um, you know, whether that's about our employees, whether it's about different countries and different governments working their way through this thing. No one on the planet has been through it. No one has got any experience. No one knows all the answers. So we've just got to sort of buckle up and, you know, hold tight for the ride and, and make look over our shoulder at our own employees, uh, at our own families and friends and, and see if, you know, they're all getting through this situation as well as the next guy. And I can assure you they're not. So um, if we've got these assets and our, these resources, our job is to make sure they're, they're distributed and make sure that the, you know, the global nature of our business and Andrew and his great team in Kenya um, are doing everything they can for the community. Uh, and I really mean that. And there are so many examples in all the 220 countries. There may only be the foundation working in Kenya now, but there are so many other things that are similar. Um, we run an organization called DHL's Got Heart, which um, takes the great ideas of our employees from a philanthropic point of view and the things they're doing in the local community. And we, we provide financial support to those people and the things they're doing with everything from a cat and dog home in Bahrain through to a, a school in, in Tibet. And, um, this is about helping helping others with our resources and our assets. And you know, my last point is back to the, the project in Kenya itself is about um, helping women establish businesses in a uh, in a digital in a digital world. And I think if we've learned anything from this pandemic is that e-commerce and digital communication. And digital business is something that is absolutely thriving. Right? I say to my wife, keep shopping and keep shipping because um, the e-commerce business at the minute and in reality, you know, for the next years now, as um, commercial, what we call Cal, commercial airspace and passenger planes are very limited. However, anyone thinks and wants them to come back quickly, they're not going to come back quickly. And that place is... Um, enormous pressure in a positive way on our organization to make sure we have the, the dedicated airlift in, in all parts of the world to be able to keep on providing an inbound service to Africa and an outbound service to Africa. Um, the digital opportunities presented um, to anyone now are enormous and I know that so many women are going to meet with so much success because um, those women have the head, heart and guts that I'm referring to. And if you think about world trade now, you know, just several generations ago, if you wanted to buy a bale of wool from Australia, it took about 18 months to receive samples and send telexes and move product on a ship. But now literally you can set up a global business from your garage or your garden or your spare bedroom and be trading with the world overnight. And that is literally how easy it is if you have a great product but most of all if you have great support so i would close by saying there's no limit to the support we will 
give this program. The financial support is one thing, but as we get into the first weeks and months and we find out we've got things that we could do better or maybe some more financial investment is needed to get over one bridge or another, then we'll continue to do that because nothing would give me more pleasure than being in Kenya and seeing the success of however many um, women in business um, that, that, that prevail through this program. And it really doesn't matter, but nothing would give me more pleasure to see that uh, firsthand. There is no, no day better in my calendar than when I'm in country with our people and seeing the impact of what they do. And I would remind everyone that our stated purpose is connecting people and improving lives. Global trade improves lives. It makes countries more positive. It puts salaries up of the people on the front line and blue collar workers, and that leads to a better world. So thank you for, to everyone that has spent more than a few minutes on making this launch possible, on creating the app and helping us, you know, you know, fire the starting pistol, so to speak. And um, it's only, you know, downhill or onwards and upwards, whatever analogy you want to say from here. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much, John, um, for just your unparalleled support uh, for this particular program. And it could not have come at a more opportune time, particularly in this country and everything we're facing, and particularly to the women in this country. Thank you very much. Um, before we continue to our next speaker, may I ask for um, that they, at the bottom of your screen, there are two chat boxes. They serve, um, and I would like you to use the question and answer bar, uh, box to be able to ask your questions. If there is a question you have for a specific panelist, may I kindly request that you indicate their name and the question after that. We will definitely have a question and answer session after the panelists have spoken where we could, we could answer one or two of your questions. Thank you very much. Um, um, we'd now like to invite uh, Helen um, McCatherine, who is the CEO of the Sherry Blair Foundation uh, for Women, who will tell us more about the Hard Venture uh, app, app and how it has also helped tens of thousands uh, of women around the world. Uh, Helen, over to you. Thank you, Andrew. I hope you can all hear me. Um, uh, good afternoon. I'm so pleased to be able to meet together and celebrate this, bringing this new business opportunity to women in Kenya of what is an incredibly challenging time. As CEO of the Sheree Blair Foundation for Women, it is in my great pleasure to share with you a little bit more about the Her Venture app that we are so proud of and that we're so thrilled that we've been able to launch in Kenya with the very generous support of DHL Express, as John has kindly shared, and also our national partner, Site, who is also with us today. I'd like to briefly explain the Her Venture app. Um, many of you may not have had a chance to use it yet, and we will encourage you, would encourage you to download it. But I'd just like to explain a little bit more about it so you know what, what the opportunity is. Her Venture is a digital learning app designed specifically for women who own micro, micro or small businesses. It is free of charge right now in Kenya, thanks to DHL Express, and is available for use online on Android devices. And it will be very shortly be available, I think as Cherie said, on uh, iOS. It can be downloaded and used offline and online. So it's convenient if you wish to use it offline. And um, as we've said, it has now launched in Kenya and has been available for uh, a few months and we're just in the pilot stage. The app helps women entrepreneurs to gain business knowledge, to gain business skills, to enhance their networks. And we know they need these things to grow their businesses. It does it in a form that is convenient and it doesn't take a lot of time. And we know from our 12 years of experience at the foundation of working with women entrepreneurs, that the most precious thing a woman entrepreneur has is time. Her venture is designed to tailor the training content and the learning experience to each woman's needs. 
It does this by asking questions up front. The answers are used to tailor the learning experience to the individual woman entrepreneur and her needs. So regardless of whether the user is a startup and may not have yet launched her business or a very established business that they wish to grow, the learning tracks will be designed and offered to suit that woman's needs. So for example, a startup may need to understand the financial viability of the concept they have, to understand market research and how to conduct it, and to look at startup finance. And the app learning journey will be designed so those relevant modules can be served to that woman entrepreneur as they progress through the learning tracks. All the content's designed to be engaging and interactive. We use swipeable flashcards, quizzes, and action plan summaries. In each module, users can ask questions of others who are using the program and other women entrepreneurs. And Her Venture also supports networking by enabling women to connect with other women through either location, sector, or username. So it really supports and builds that network. With the support and expertise of DHL, we will be learn, launching a seventh track on e-commerce in the next few weeks. Uh, this is absolutely vital development and we're thrilled that we've been able to bring this to the app with DHL because it will really support business resilience whilst we face the impacts of COVID-19. What we've seen since we launched the app in 2018, and it's been used by nearly 25,000 people in Nigeria, Indonesia, Vietnam, and now Kenya, is that almost all users plan to apply the learning that they get through the app. 87% say that it improves their confidence, which we know is a vital need for women. And the secretary did mention this, 79% said the app helped them to implement new methods of running their business. Two thirds reported that it increased profits. Three quarters reported it increased client numbers. And over half have used it to network with other women entrepreneurs. With our experience and these outcomes, we know that it will have long-term benefits. And again, as the secretary mentioned, we know that if you impact on the economic opportunities of a woman, this has far reaching effects on families, children's well-being, communities, and the broader society and economy. So we're thrilled that the app helps women and stops them being held back by a lack of knowledge, skills, networks, and confidence. Kenya was selected, uh, as Cherie mentioned, because it met some important criteria for us. As we've heard today from the secretary, the government is very committed to women's entrepreneurship development. Smartphone ownership and use is high with women entrepreneurs in Kenya. And there was clearly identified learning needs when we conducted our research. However, there is also gaps as we've also heard. And in particular, we found that there was gaps around a clear lack of digital and specifically app-based learning options for women business owners, especially those geared around time poor women who can't attend training face-to-face -face and need flexibility. And there was also a huge gap at the startup phase. And we know with COVID-19, many more women will need to start new businesses and adapt their business. So that startup phase is incredibly important now. We have localized the content as Sheree mentioned. And with the pandemic being felt, it's even more important that, uh, th that this app is available to women because it allows you to learn new skills, new relevant skills, whilst maintaining social distancing. And without it, that may not have been possible to as many women before. Everywhere the foundation works, we collaborate with local partners. To do our job well, we believe we bring our expertise with women business owners together with local partners, knowledge and experience. And in Kenya, we are thrilled to be working with Site, who will help us market, manage and deliver a high quality user experience for women entrepreneurs. As I said, the app's only been up for a little bit of time, but already we know that it is 
very attractive to younger women. 73% of users so far have been under 40 and 40% 40 under 30. And we know the need for economic opportunity in the younger group is incredibly important. It's also attracting users across um, the vast range of sectors, agriculture, trading. So we know it's got a wide uh, attraction already in Kenya. We are thrilled that we'll be able to pilot the new e-commerce track that's been made possible through the expertise and support of DHL Express. And we look forward to continuing to working, work with DHL and site so that we can hit that target and I expect exceed it and reach more than 10,000 women business owners in Kenya in the coming months. Finally, uh, I think the best way for you to hear about what the app does and how it helps women is to he hear from women users there themselves. As the CEO of the foundation, I'm inspired every day by women entrepreneurs and business owners. And I can testify to John that there is absolutely no doubt that they have the head, the heart and the guts uh, to really bring huge potential to our societies if given the right support. And so I'm very pleased that Sola from Nigeria is with us today to share how the app helped her and her business. So I'd now like to hand back to Andrew to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Helen. Uh, I like the spark uh, in your eyes when you talk about this particular, you know, uh, uh, application and just uh, breaking it down for us in terms of uh, how significant it has been elsewhere. And it cannot give me any greater pleasure than to invite uh, Sola Babatunde. Um, who will give us just a high experience in as far as uh, this application and how it has made a significant change in how you conduct your business. So, um, Sola, uh, welcome and uh, over to you. Hello everyone. My name is Shola Babatunde. I'm really honored and happy that I'm here today. You know, when I won, I got involved with the Sherry Blair Road to Growth Foundation training. It was amazing. It was one of the major paradigm shifts in my life and in my business. You know, as the professor said earlier, when you train women, and especially with business skills, finance, and accounting knowledge, you're, you're making them take their hobbies to a greater sustainable business. You know, I went from having just two, three staffs to having over 50 staffs today, you know, and I'm, I can assure you that the Road to Growth, my business plan for the Road to Growth, I still use it till today. So back then, the app was not yet uh, um, available, but as, as soon as I heard about the app, I downloaded it and I started to use it. And I'm telling you, it's like I'm having a refresher cost, you know, some of the topics that really you know resonated with me especially the bookkeeping making sure that you know all your important books are available my staff they know i do not joke anymore with all my um I, I, can you hear me said my volume is low yeah okay good so i know i they know that now i don't joke with my accounting records i don't wait till it's um end of the month i want to see weekly twice a week and of course at the end of the month so that we're able to check what is going on and what is going wrong. And the app has been amazing, especially with the community, when other people are able to ask questions, you can also gain from the answers that have been given to that person. You can also put your own questions in and you can go back or go forward to any of the topics that you, know, you didn't understand well in class. So it's really, really amazing. And the most um, interesting part is I also use it to train my students. So I have a fashion school and oh, I didn't say who I was. So I'm a fashion uh, school owner, OSC College of Fashion. And I also have a mass production factory. I'm actually at work. I'm at the factory. I don't know if you can all see the factory behind me. So as COVID, you know, hit Nigeria, hit the whole world, it was a devastating, you know, uh, thing. We had to initially close down. I was afraid how would my staff who, and I said, I've now increased capacity based on all my training. I've been able to grow my business. And then COVID happened. So 
I was really scared and a lot of us were scared on how are we going to let all those workers go? How are we going to continue to pay their, the, the salaries? So, but with all the background training and especially the, the training on finance, I would say, helped me to quickly you know, innovate, become innovative and come up with production of face masks, PPEs, and I was able to call staff back. And not only did I call them back, I was able to even increase my capacity and hire more people because I couldn't meet the demand. You know, well, everywhere was locked down. I was able to get permits to produce the COVID-19 uh, um, um, equipment and um, material. So we made face masks, like I said. And that really helped us to see that this is the potential that the company can actually reach. Yes, so now there's a downward um, demand for the mask and all the things we've been producing. Also, it's been a little bit challenging ensuring the distancing. So we have days where people don't come to work. We had some people who, you know, we had no, no need. They, we had to stay back at home. Like right now, the factory is practically empty. We don't have uh, physical work, but you know, we are able to do our online training and that's where I want women to be able to embrace technology. So we've moved our classes, the school, some of it is online, where it's actually going on in the other class, which is why I had to move out so that I'm not disturbing them in the training office. But you know, it's been challenging, but knowing all the business background and the training from the road to growth, I'm telling you, it, it gives me a reassurance that there's hope. And I'm hoping that, you know, not only would women get support to be able to use this um, app and be able to learn and give feedback, but I think at this time, if a little support, say, um, for business would, would help. You know, um, Professor mentioned something about the mental uh, side of things right now. A lot of women call me, especially those in my industry, how are you coping? The stress, a lot of the men have lost their jobs and they tend to, um, to you know, bring, <laughs> bring out their frustration a bit on the women, you know, all kudos to men. But, you know, so now the children are home. Like this morning, I had to make sure they finish their online school, do all their homework. My son is forgetting how to write properly. I have to now make sure he writes and do all that. Then I have to come to work and still be a mother, a trainer to everyone. So it's a lot for women right now. So being able to have a community that they can go to, even if it's just on the Her Venture app, to be able to ask, how are you, what are you doing to, to cope during this season? It's a, an amazing therapeutic uh, way. And also go back to the drawing board, which I am doing. I'm retweaking all my models. I'm checking what we need to do. So right now I want to write a book about all my experiences in business and be able to teach other women. And of course, looking for collaborations and any support you know, that we can get right now would be fantastic. But you know, we have to keep our hopes up. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you to Sherry Blair. Thank you to Madam Sherry. I, I met you when you came to Nigeria. It's, I'm telling you, it's a life-changing experience for me. And I say it everywhere I go to. Capacity building, financial knowledge is very, very important for women and anyone. Thank you, also, I want to say shout out to DHL. If I could say something to DHL, thank DHL. I have used DHL, you know, to export. I use it to do my small business export. However, I'm appealing, please, if there's a way you can further reduce the tariffs for small businesses. I know it's because I'm a business person, so I know it's challenging. But we have issues where when we want to ship something, and the shipping cost is even much more expensive than the item the person bought. You know, I had that. I, I had an order to California and I shipped the dresses there, even though they love the dresses, but they said because of the shipping. So please, if it's possible to find a way to still further reduce. But thank you. You're doing a fantastic job. They were amazed at how fast, because, you know, people are afraid, afraid, afraid of Nigeria. Nigeria. They were afraid of how fast they were able to get the package. They got it in three days. They sent me that feedback. It was amazing. Thank you. Andrew will make sure all your wishes come true anyway, Andrew. It's the genie in our bottle. Thank you, Alasula. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, Sola, I mean, thank you so much. Um, it, it's been really nice to, 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 to 
to, to hear the value that you have gotten um, from from this uh, from this app, and just the advice that you that you're giving to others who will jump on board uh, to the same. I wish you all the best. We've we've had what you said. We'll take your feedback. Uh, you know, and I'll communicate to my Nigerian counterparts. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank yeah. you. Very much. I'd now like to invite Helen, who will be the moderator for our question and answer session. May I request uh, participants, um, uh, again, uh, I can see quite a number of questions. Please use the Q and A box at the bottom of your screen where you could type out your questions. If you would like a specific, a specific um, uh, panelist to answer a question from you, please indicate their name against your question. And that said, uh, Helen, over to you. Um, to moderate the question and answer session. Um. Thanks very much, Andrew. So I can see we have a lot of questions. I think we already have 15. Um, but uh, so hopefully some of you will be able to stay. We'll go over a little bit. We're at about eight minutes uh, ahead of the hour now, but I hope we can go to about a quarter past. So we have a little bit of time for some questions for this amazing panel. But first I'm going to just inter introduce Harun, whose um, image is there. He's off mute. He uh, leads site for uh, who works with the Sheree Blair Foundation for Women in Kenya. So Harun, I'd welcome you to introduce yourself and site and the work they do. And I have a couple of questions I'd just like to pose to you once you've introduced yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, uh, now for sake of time, I'll just say a few things about SITE. SITE is a Kenyan uh, private enterprise development organization and for 20 odd years we've been working with small businesses and for the last 10 years we have had a program focusing on women entrepreneurs. Uh, SITE is very pleased to be uh, working with the foundation uh, in looking at new ways of delivering training and getting women entrepreneurs into the digital space. And uh, for the last two, two months or so, we've been um, running this pilot. When we first designed it, it was under the old normal. Uh, we expected to reach the women entrepreneurs the way we always did over the years. But COVID, thanks to COVID, we had to innovate and look at new ways of introducing it and having them use it. And within that period of, 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 of the pilot, over 900 women have uh, looked at the app, they have started using it, and we're very much looking forward to uh, testing um, the e-commerce track because there's a lot of interest in and we see new opportunities uh, for the women entrepreneurs. And so we thank uh, DHL and the foundation for choosing Kenya, and we're pleased to be part of that effort. We think it's going to uh, put new tools uh, and it's putting new tools in the hand of women entrepreneurs in Kenya. It will be competitive and this we look forward to be part of in the long term. Thank you very much. And by the way, a number of the women who have used it in the, in the trial period are with us today. So if, uh, you know, there are quite a number of them and they're quite interesting. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's wonderful. Welcome any users of the app, any women entrepreneur in Kenya. So wonderful to have you with us. Uh, we've had a lot of questions and I'm going to ask a couple to you, Harun, to start. Um, we, we've had one about how can technology enhance networking of women in similar businesses that allows them to benchmark and learn best practices. And so I'd like you to um, see if you could answer that for me, Harun, with your thoughts. Um, and uh, another question we've had, which maybe you can start with and then we can see if others um, would like to add to it, is with banks giving loans to uh, women, SMEs, and also the government's Women Enterprise Fund, is funding still really a problem for women entrepreneurs in Kenya? So I'll go to you, Harun, and then I might hand over to others. Thank you. Okay. To the first, to the first question, yeah, indeed, um, peer learning is quite effective. Uh, among women entrepreneurs. And we think that um, using uh, the, among the users of the app and other women entrepreneurs in specific sectors, and it's good that the app is able to help us 
um, identify the sectors women are, we think we'll be able to organize, um, you know, sectoral kind of interaction groups. And there is opportunity, not only within the app, uh, to link them up and set uh, either chat rooms, Zoom meetings, or wh whatever interactions that we can promote so that they can learn from each other. But certainly, um, the, indeed, a lot of women want to learn from each other, share experiences, and indeed encourage each other. Uh, so so this, is, th this is how we think um, the app can, can help uh, in that effort. Um, to the question of finance, um, yes, financial services are a big subject. Um, but you will notice in Kenya, and part of the studies have shown, yes, there's a lot of um, financial services available. There are banks having specific programs targeting women. But women entrepreneurs are not heterogeneous. There is a layer of women entrepreneurs who, who, who do not even go to the bank. We did a, um, a study targeting 30,000 women in Nairobi, and only 15% of them were using uh, the formal sector as sources of finance. So a whole big group doesn't. So yes, there is a lot available, but there's a lot, lot more needed uh, to, to put money in the hands of women entrepreneurs. Thanks a lot, Haroon. Um, I've got, I'd like um, uh, Secretary Kobia to pick up on the point about finance if you can. And also, um, there's a few other things I'd love it if you can pick up on. Uh, there's a question, is there an opportunity for your minister, ministry um, to explore a partnership to extend the app as an opportunity through the Women Enterprise Fund to further beneficiaries in Kenya? Um, and then there is another one. Sorry, I've got a lot of questions here. Um, do, 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 sorry. Uh, what, what views do you have, Secretary Kobe, on how the app is expected to impact women in business in Kenya? So any thoughts that you have to add on the finance question and also the benefits of the app and whether you think there's a potential for it to be extended? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, let, let me start with the last question. Uh, my thoughts regarding the app, I think you know Kenya and technology is one of the, I, maybe from your study as well, that uh, most Kenyans have embraced technology and you find uh, the, the percentage of women with a telephone. In fact, we are saying sometimes people have a telephone even when they are not able to put food on the table. The, and the, the fact that uh, this application is really provides opportunities to be able to build the capacity to mentor each other, I think is uh, I I have I think in my mind that uh, this will really move move well. But at the same time, I think um, in the Kenyan context, people sometimes might might not go out to look for information. But if there's a way. The organization that are doing the any financial inclusion, uh, those who are in various giving um, loans, or even those who are in uh, NGOs working with women entrepreneurs, I think it would be good also when they get to know about it so that they, they can be introduced to it. So I have no doubt that it should be able to, to work. And I want also to say from where I sit and the fact that I I interact with quite a number of women, but uh, as, as Bayer said, women are heterogeneous. There are those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. All they need is some money to do business today, and then maybe within a very short time, they are able to either repay it. So uh, looking at uh, that possibility of getting uh, my, my convening uh, kind of um, power to bring together and bring to their knowledge what is available to help them uh, and what this app can do, I think is something I want to commit myself that we'll be able to do through that because we are what we call Kenya School of Government. And we can say those who get government loans like Women Enterprise Fund, uh, Youth Enterprise Fund, uh, how can we tap? Because those ones are already the data bank, then they can be introduced. Then we also have some network within banks where we have been appealing to banks to give loans to the women, uh, loans that uh, kind of understand the situation of women 
and uh, maybe try to give them with a slightly uh, more friendly rate. Maybe you can also be able to, to work together. I, I still believe that um, for us to reach more people, we need to work with the, everybody on the ground, around the, 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 everybody so that you can be able. And I think this forum gives us an opportunity to connect and to see how can we take it to the next level. Wherever it is, I think I'm sure we can be able to take it to the next level. Uh, Helen, you did ask, uh, is there financial needs in the Kenyan context? I think that every time we do a study and we, we are asking women in business, what are some of the things you struggle with? Financial uh, needs come like on top. But we now know better that it's not just the financial needs. You can have the money, but you see your need to have other skills, how to, know, to, do, how to, to be able to manage that loan, how to be able to, to find the market, how to be able to think through before you go to business, that the business means you are providing a solution to something that the community needs. How do you get to know what business should you go into? So I think uh, besides financial, we also think the other uh, needs that a, a woman in business requires. And I think that's why uh, I believe this application will be able to kind of bring that value uh, and I think it makes it, uh, uh, it will make it much easier for uh, women in, in business. We also know, uh, Helen, uh, most of the business, even when they start up, we know three businesses die within the first three years. Let's also try to have a theory. Uh, now with an app, let's track those ones which get started, to what extent are they surviving to, to grow or to go to the next level. So I, in Kenyan context, uh, financial uh, support for women in businesses uh, is, is zero a uh, hub here. And the any effort that can uh, make this money available, I think is important. But then I don't I want her to think it's only the money that matters. Quite a number, if you give me the money, I will identify the need, I need a market. I also need skills of how to run a business. I also need to know how I struggle with imbalancing that responsibility, uh, my other core responsibilities, and running a business. So, and all these can happen with, the, with a very well thought through uh, a partnership and including mentorship. Because the other women who have gone further, and they can mentor those who are just beginning. Because they, at the same time in the Kenyan context, we really have shortages of meaningful jobs. Therefore, this opportunity of women being in small businesses gives us a promise for the future. I thank you. Can I just add something, Helen? I think I would want, first of all, say to, 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 to the minister that that was precisely why um, we, we do the programs we do, the Her Venture app, the Road to Growth program, precisely because it's not enough just to give a woman some money and say, mm. money, get on with it. You really have to, you know, doing business isn't just about having a skill. Mm. Uh, it isn't just about having money. It's about knowing how you put your skill with your money to create a market, uh, to uh, create employment, and to support yourself and all the things that you've identified. And that's why we see often that we run our services alongside um, mm. people like the Kenyan government who are giving small loans because we can say, we don't have the money to give the loans, but we can help you make sure that the people you do give the loans to are better equipped to know how to use them properly. So I'm delighted that we are of the same mind in that. And I just wanted to respond to the question, because I think it was from a man who said, well, look, we've got all these loans and they're available to everyone. So why, you know, what's the problem with women? I mean, the reality is, I'm afraid, that all the statistics show that there is a problem with women because when you have funds available uh, generally, the overwhelming number of them go to men, not to women. Mm -hmm. And recently, actually, we, we did a, a survey among the women that we work with, asking them particularly about whether they had come across sexual stereotyping mm -hmm. um, and indeed sex, overt sex discrimination, but leave that to one side. What we found from that is, yes, 75% of them had come across sexual stereotyping 
stereotyping. And a lot of it was to do with women and money. So many of them had encountered, over 30% of them had encountered the idea that women just don't do business or that they can't manage money. Something I find incredible because when we think of how women manage their households, of course they can manage money or that women just didn't have that business brain that men have. And these deep-seated assumptions uh, about what the role of women um, can often mean that there was money available, those making the loans unconsciously make these assumptions and think, oh, it's not a safe bet because she's a woman. Now, forgive me, I'm afraid I actually do have to go. And so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody, particularly to Sola. I will come and see you because you know I go to Nigeria uh, 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 and uh, I'll see you again. And I am absolutely booking my flight to Kenya as soon as we can get there. And thank you so much, DHL. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm afraid I do have to go. Thanks, Cherie. Um, I'll just have a couple of questions and we'll wrap up. I'd like to pose a question to John, actually, the networking question. There he is. I can see him. So, John, I'd like your thoughts on how can technology enhance networking of women in similar businesses and allow them to benchmark themselves and learn from best practice? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, John Graham, John Pearson. Oh, I thought I was asking John, John Pearson. Yeah, sorry. I wasn't sure. Um, well, I just think that, you know, how can I answer that question? I think the the, the networking capability, like if we just come, maybe I, I just come back to COVID for a second as a way of us answering it. The networking and communication capability available to us now is more than it's ever been before. Not just the sort of Zoom call that we're on now, but the technology we're providing to um, the women in Kenya and the technology that's available to everyone. So I think from, from my point of view, you know, we need to be accessible. We need to be communicating the tools and the opportunity to communicate and network and share stories and ask questions. As Cherie said, there is not just about money. It's about learning and, and having access to more information, having access to other people that maybe have been through, you know, um, similar, similar business issues or any sort of issues as a way of carving out your own route to success. So I think that's one of the big pluses and uh, opportunities and tools and levers um, available to us now. So I think that's, of all the many good things that make business easier now, I mean, people tend to focus on, on the negative and how life at the minute is a bit harder. But I think in reality, you look at any number of statistics and, you know, um, in any in any walk of life, things are much better than they were, and communication and um, you know networking capability is one of those things. So I think we're in a fantastic position, and any of the people that are on this call are in a fantastic position to take opportunity of that. Thank you, John. That's really helpful. Um, we have a lot of, we have a lot of but. I've got some feedback, sorry. Um, we have a lot of questions, but unfortunately we have run out of time. I will try and just mention a few things that I can from my, uh, my knowledge. We are keen to take the, lot, the app elsewhere in Kenya. Um, it is in Nigeria, I'm now in Kenya. We would like to, to also launch it. Well, we'd love to launch it everywhere, but South Africa and Rwanda are two priority countries that we'd love to launch it with um, some support from uh, funders and with uh, 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 an environment that uh, supports it, which we believe there is in those countries. It has reached over 10,000 women in Nigeria. There was a question about that. The target was 2,000 and it reached, I think, 12,000 um, in the first six months. It is um, geared around having some access to data. It is designed in a way to be lighter on data usage, but it does require some data and it is does require um, a certain level of literacy but it is quite simple, as I mentioned earlier. So it isn't a difficult learning program to interact with. Um, so may not be appropriate for everyone, but it is it will support quite a wide range of women business owners, much wider than most programs do. So it is a, a widely scalable, replicable approach. Um, 
let me just see if there's anything else. I think we have people's names, so we'll do our best to follow up where we can with the questions we have. Um, and I'm going to go back to Andrew, who is going to wrap up. Thank you, Andrew. I would just, if I can just interrupt before Andrew, before Andrew says anything there. Yeah, I think with, with Q&A, it's important that we get back to everyone. The great thing about the Q&A, as I saw there, and I see 28 still on my screen, is that they're all sort of interested in the app, interested in when this is starting, interested in how this works. And, you know, that's, that's the best thing I could have um, really <laughs> wanted um, in terms of what the questions are that shows the sort of pent up interest. So that's fantastic. And we should make uh, full efforts to, to ensure that every question is answered by email or online or some a phone number given so that someone can ring someone and ask their question again if it wasn't answered. Absolutely. And the team will follow up uh, with everyone. Thanks very much, John. Thank we will try to do that in Kenya from here. Thank you, Haron. That we really appreciate that, and we'll involve you in answering those questions. Thank Andrew. you. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Helen, would you like to? Do you have any closing remarks uh, from um, the Sherry Blair Foundation for Women? Well, I, I'd just like to thank you, Andrew, our host, the country director of DHL in Kenya. Thank you for doing a wonderful job today. I'd like to thank all our speakers who have contributed from their perspectives. Mr. John Pearson, the CEO of DHL Express, our cabinet secretary, Professor Kobe, thank you so much for taking the time out of what must be an incredibly hectic schedule to be with us. Uh, Mrs. Blair has unfortunately had to leave, but I really appreciate her attending today. Asola, thank you so much for bringing your experience. It's so wonderful to see you. Um, and I've heard about some of your learning before, so it was great to have you share it. And Harun from Sight, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, the app is available on the Google Play Store. It will be available on the Apple store shortly I believe in the next couple of weeks so that is imminent um, and the e-commerce module will be available at, in early August at the latest please do download the app and share it with people uh, that you know who could benefit from it um, it's part of our hundred thousand women campaign that we've launched you can find out more about it on the Sherry Blair Foundation for Women website we are going to reach many more than a hundred thousand women in the next two and a half years. We've reached many already this year with your help. So please do share um, the app far and wide. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, back to you, Andrew. Thank you, Helen. I sincerely appreciate, uh, you know, um, you handling the question and answer session by ably and your passion really for this particular program. And now, uh, finally, and certainly not the least, I would like to invite the CEO of uh, DHL Express in Sub-Saharan Africa, my media boss, uh, Henny Heyman, to give us his reflections on this particular session and the closing remarks as well. Henny, please. Thank you, Andrew, and, and thank you, everybody. We, we're over time, so I'm going to keep it really short um, in terms of just some thoughts and, uh, and some comments. I think for us, you know, our 40 plus years uh, in Africa has seen many firsts. And, and this is another first of which we are incredibly proud of. Um, diversity and inclusion is something that's very much part of our DNA. And when John called me up about this initiative, um, it was just a natural thing to say yes and to get quite excited about it. I think for us as leaders, we, we have a great opportunity and in fact an obligation to, to use our influence to better the lives of others, uh, whether it's in a country or a region, or globally as, as John operates. And this is one of those wonderful opportunities where we as leaders have an opportunity to make changes to the lives of others. And I'm absolutely convinced that history will look back upon today and this launch and say that was the right thing and every leader that's on this call did the right thing to support this initiative. I wanna extend a special thank you to the Honorable Minister. Uh, Minister, thank you for attending. We know that uh, your diaries are particularly packed and to you being here, has just given us um, another bit of inspiration because it shows us as DHL how important this is for you and from a government perspective in Kenya. To everybody that's registered today as well, I want to say a special thank you. Um, it is really important. We can only bring the initiative to the market. It's now important for the market to pick up on this initiative. So I want to encourage all of you to download this app, share today's session of all of your friends. 
And as a special thank you and to further support this initiative, um, I will, in conjunction with Andrew and all of my colleagues around Africa, come up with a tariff very specially uh, for our women entrepreneurs that's going to go onto this app, use this app, and start exporting um, their, their goods or perhaps imports. So, so watch this space. We will come up with a tariff that's very specifically designed and and, um, and catering for, for you as young and upcoming businesses. It's always, so best, to ask, it's always best to ask, Ola Sola. That's good. <laughs> thank you, Eddie. Um, You're so, a generous so that, man. Thank you, John. So with that, um, thank you very much to everybody involved, all of the leaders. I think today has been an important um, step forward for the empowerment of women on this continent. And with that, Andrew, thank you very much. And uh, back to you. Um. Thank you, Henry, very much uh, for your comments and, and for that tariff. We look forward uh, to, to, to that tariff. Um, and there will be no better way uh, to finish uh, this particular session than to thank uh, all the participants uh, on this call, both those, uh, all those who um, send out their questions to our fantastic uh, panelists and all the participants uh, as well. And in closing, uh, rather than just say goodbye, I would like to do so in a poetic way. And I will say in closing, there is a tide in the affairs of women, which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we afloat now, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. The tide is now with the application of how venture take the tide and fly. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for the opportunity. I wish you well. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Andrew, and to all our team in, in Kenya there. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Bye bye now. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure. Bye.